Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Kamish Orr, and I actually had this question uh, on one of my videos about how I uh, showed this little, uh, the little fielding ratings when I was using ball score to track uh, or to enter score sheets. And so uh, I thought I'd take a quick, make a quick video to show you how you can enter uh, fielding ratings so that if you're using ball score, they'll show up here when you're playing. And um, just show you a quick video of how that works because I had to kind of use some trial and error to figure this out. There are some other videos out there on ball stat and ball score and kind of tutorials on how to use it. So I'm not gonna rehash all of that, uh, all of that territory because I think there's videos already out there that kind of walk you through different processes. I'm not sure there's one that, that takes a look at these ratings though. And so I thought I'd, I'd just make this quick video just to show you that piece of it. So what I've done here is I've pulled up the uh, score sheet for the final game of the Baseball Maelstrom World Series. Um, you can actually go check that out over at BaseballMaelstrom.com if you want to see how that all transpired. But this is game six between the Detroit Rockets and the St. Louis Wizards. And I use ball score and ball stat to keep track of the stats uh, to enter the score sheet as I'm playing, uh, enter the results. Um, and so I'm going to just show you where to go to enter the fielding ratings so that they show up here on the defense uh, screen during your play. Okay, so the first thing I got to tell you is that in order to get this this box to even show up while you're playing, you have to hit the number four key. So if I hit number four, it goes away. If I hit number four, it comes back. So that's how you get this uh, this pop out to show up in the first place. Very very handy, very handy because. Um, you know, if you're like me and you're playing, you don't want to have to flip through all of the um, fielding cards to find the ratings that you're looking for while you're playing the game. It's just quicker if you just have a have them all listed here so you can just quickly glance over and see the ratings in question. Now, um, now let me show you where you enter uh, the information on the players in order for these ratings to show up. And that's all done through the the RLM, the Roster and Lineup Manager. So if you click on RLM for a team and that pulls up their roster, and this of course has their lineup as well for this game. But let's take a look at their roster here and let me look at, uh, let's say Kenny Lofton. Here's Kenny Lofton. So you highlight the player in question in the roster screen. And then over here you have a button that says Edit Selected Player, okay? And if you edit selected player, you can enter last name, first name, the way they bat, the way they throw, their jersey number if you wanted to do that. But on the right-hand side, you see player ratings. Okay, and there's a bunch of fields here. Now, um, if you look through the ball, ball score, ball stat guide, you do not get a lot of information on uh, what each of these fields means and where it's going to show up. So I had to use a lot of trial and error to figure this out. Um, and I'm, so I'm not using all of these lines and let me tell you the areas that I found that don't show. I think the one that say not used don't really show up anywhere over here. So for example, this first field that's 12, by the way, this 12 means 12 characters. That's how long, how, uh, how many characters you can enter in that field. So this first one not used, I don't think that's used anywhere. I don't think it displays anywhere while you're playing. Okay. Um, the, so what I did is I set up the second field, which is position range error and arm rating, which is the payoff pitch, uh, fielding ratings. Really. I set that up to be, um, the ratings, the fielding ratings, so that they'd show up here in this first column. So this first spot is going to be in this first column down below. And so I did range error arm. And so C is the range, four is the error, and then dash, six, six is the arm. I put the dash in there so that there'd be a little separation between the error rating and the arm rating so that when I go to look down here, um, I can more easily find the number I'm looking for. And not all positions have an arm rating. Only the outfield and the catcher positions have the arm rating in payoff pitch. So since you get four spots, that's what I use those four spots for. Now, very important, the second, the second one here with a four, uh, four um, that can be up to four characters. 
long is the run rating. And that one, you want to always make your run rating. The first one, you can make it be whatever you want. Just know it's going to show up in this first column. But the second one, the run rating, is important to have the run rating there because when players get on base, their names will appear down in this lower box with the run rating next to it. And so the run rating is really what you, what you want to have show up there. Now, you could do steal if, if the game in question has a steal and run rating. I only use the run rating because in the way I pay, play payoff pitch, um, I'm checking for a steal as soon as they reach base. So that I already have their card pulled up. So I don't need to have it in this quick reference down here. But if, the, if that particular uh, player is on third base and it's a few batters later, it's very handy to have that run rating there to look at because that way I don't have to flip back through the cards. So you could put steel in here um, if you wanted to, but again, I didn't because I would already have their card pulled up for that, for those purposes, um, and wouldn't need it down here. So this second, again, you want to, if you want to change it, change it to run because that's what's going to show up down here. And you can see Blackwell 8. 8 is his running rating. So you know what the running rating is. It will also show up in this column up above as well, but again, you don't really... Uh, pay attention to that very much when they're on defense because it's the defense that's showing up down here. You'll notice I have the Detroit Rockets part of the score sheet pulled up here, but it's the St. Louis Wizards defense that's showing down here because it, the game or ball score knows that we want to see the defense, not the team that's batting. Um, but anyway, that's where run would go. I didn't really use any of the other columns because it just made things too busy for me, but you could use something in the third and fourth spot. And these will show up in these columns down here, this, the second and third column down here. And then the very final one, which is just a one character space, would show up on the end here down below if you enter something there. And the one above that, not used is another one that I couldn't figure out what it was for, honestly. Some of these may be uh, maybe a pitcher rating because I think they may show up down here, but I just didn't use them because I couldn't really figure it out and it didn't really serve any purpose for me. So I guess what I'm saying is whatever game you happen to be playing, um, you have to kind of decide what ratings are important to see during the game and what's going to speed things up for you and also decide which ones you're not going to include because there's not enough room. The one disadvantage with the way I have set things set up is that if I have a, a particular player that is playing a position that's not his primary position, only his primary position ratings are going to show up down here. That's what I've entered up here. Now, at one time I did have, uh, you'll notice that one of these says uh, position two range, position two error and arm. So I did have a secondary position ratings in here, but again, that just kind of cluttered things up and there was hardly, there weren't enough times where a player was playing a secondary position for it to matter to me. Um, so that's why I just kept their, their primary position um, defense ratings in here. But if you want to use those other columns, you're welcome to do so. You just would enter them here and then they would show up in these two columns down below. Um, changing the rating tile uh, titles. So if you need to change what these say, okay, you would do that under change rating titles here. So as you see, if you click on that, you have the rating header and the abbreviation. The abbreviation is what shows up in this table down here. So you can see the rating number two header was PS for position number one because it was their primary position. And then RNGE arm, range error arm. The abbreviation I used was REA, range error arm. And that's what shows up down here in the column. Uh, the abbreviation can only be three characters. So that kind of limits you on what you can use for abbreviations. So you want it to be something that you kind of know what it is or know what it means. But there's here's where you would go as I said, you would just click on this change rating titles and you could change the rating headers and the abbreviation that's used in the chart. 
So uh, you would just enter the new ratings for each player. You click on OK to save. Um, you go down the list. You click on the next player. You click edit selected player. You change the ratings. You click OK to save. And then it would save the ratings for that player um, into the roster file for ball score. So that the next time you play and you pull up that team's roster, the ratings would be saved for you. I In the very beginning of the league, I had a couple of funky things happen where I would, I would save the ratings and then they would not appear when I went to um, play the team again. But that only happened in the very beginning. So my guess is I did something in an incorrect order. I did something wrong that caused the ratings not to show up. You want to make sure that when you edit each player and enter their ratings, that you click the OK button to save them afterwards. So if you see, I click OK and it pulls up and wants to know what roster file I want to save it on. So make sure you do that so that your ratings are saved because they're saved as part of that roster file. Then no matter what you, how you set the lineup, that uh, those ratings are going to appear for that player. All right, I think that's all uh, I need to say to explain that. Hopefully that made sense. Again, you hit the number four key on the keyboard in order to get the uh, quick reference to show up. You go into the roster and lineup manager go on into the roster for the particular player in question and click edit selected player in order to enter those ratings. The first time, if you need to change the rating titles and uh, the headers and the abbreviations, you would click that button, go in there to change those. And at every point, you want to make sure you're clicking OK to save your selections. So it saves that roster file so that you don't have to re-enter them every time you play the game. Once they're saved on the roster file, you should be good to go. All right, that's where we will leave things today. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that is unclear or that you'd like to see. Um, but hopefully that made sense. Uh, if you want to check out my current projects, you can always uh, head over to baseballmaelstrom.com to follow the action, or you can follow videos here. I post, uh, post videos throughout my projects, kind of updating you on progress. So you can check those out as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a great evening.